How I think about technology is I watch for utility. Right? Gimmicks, great, cool, whatever. This, how many people, raise your hand, have used a paper map in your car in the past year? So we have some cartographers in the room. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy this. That's fantastic. I don't. Okay? And we can, we can lament the loss of serendipity. We can talk about, I used to go to this old restaurant. I just happened to one. That's cool. That's neither good or bad. That's just a fact. So I just want to put that in your mind in terms of how people actually adopt technology, okay? Utility, in my opinion, is the first thing to watch with a new technology. I want to give you a formula today to take away uh, that, that, that should be helpful with marketing. Utility equals adoption. This is a picture I took on the train, New Jersey Transit, last week. It's a very happy couple. Look how happy they are. You know what happened? They took a picture, they downloaded an iPhone app, they're taking a picture of their check, and they're automatically depositing it. USAA has had this app for two years. Wow. Not that sexy. Friday afternoon, 4.45, it's raining outside. This is sexy, right? You deposit this and you're like, boom, I have money for the weekend. Utility is a huge step towards adoption. QR codes, I'm going to get right into the geeky stuff, okay? You've probably heard all about QR codes are the newest thing. They're not the newest thing. Look to Tokyo. Look to the globe. For mobile technologies, get out of the head of North America, right? South Korea, Amsterdam, Germany, these are the people I look to, right, to see what we're going to talk about in the next three years. QR code stands for Quick Response Codes. Very simply, you see this white square, might be on a t-shirt, might be on a sticker, might be on a poster. There's black data in there, you can change it. If you went to South by Southwest this year, on your badge, you had a QR code, so I could take a picture, instantly get your contact information. Utility, it's a good thing to have, it's easy. Does it make money? The answer is yes. This is a Hong Kong um, campaign that happened. There's a company called Zoo Records that took, they said our independent record, our, our, our artists aren't getting played on the radio. We need our artists to be heard or our record company will go away, right? Pretty big stakes. They created, right, Zoo Records, about 20 animals. Each animal relates to a band. So the cat is one band and the, the seal is another. What you see, those shapes are actually about 200 QR codes. There's a poster next to it. The poster says, download this app, here's what you do, or if you don't know about QR codes, here you go. You point your phone at one part of the cat, it's one song. At the tail, it's a different song. You get the song instantly, bottom right, we're marketers, right? Buy it. One week, less than a week, over half of their albums sold out. Less than a week, half of their albums sold out. ROI. And for marketers in the room, they want to come online. One of the best global campaigns of 2010. Okay, so I just want to get right to like, gimmicky or not, people are using it. It's a visual medium. There's not a lot of explanation. A cool cat, I buy it. It's making people money. Augmented reality. My friends in the audience from Puerto Belli know that I talk about this so much that I'm, I'm not on the verge of divorce per se. But no, my, my wife just glazes over. I rehearsed this last night with her. She's so happy. Anyway, I'm going to reality. She does it. Um, what the technology is, okay, there's, there's laptop or, or, or webcam based augmented reality and there's mobile augmented reality. This, to me, about a year ago, and I'll just say, I'll be bold, feel free to mock me on Twitter. About a year ago, I found out about this technology and through all of the technologies I'm going to talk about today, this to me is the paradigm shifter. I will say, I'll be hyperbolic, this is bigger than the web. I'm not going to call it Web.4 or something like that, because I would just get, you know, eviscerated. But here we go. What this technology is, you hold up a smartphone. You have to have the right iPhone or Android phone. This is an actual existing app, took a picture of it, called the nearest subway. So you're in Soho, right? You don't know where the subway is. I've lived here 10 years. I ask a cop, right? 10 years. That's my app. Officer, that's my app. It's a real life app. <laughs> This is, you see floating around you because there's a compass, so your phone knows I know where you are, right? There's GPS data that says I know where your phone is. And then there's GPS tags or markers that someone has placed. They're basically virtual signposts and data that say that subway's over there, that subway's over there. Utility. I just want to get to the subway. Boom, it gives me turn by turn walking directions to get there. These apps are available in Paris, in Tokyo, right? You get off the plane. Boom. Utility, you'll use this. And guess what? Marketers know this. Foursquare, all these people that started this amazing sort of gaming mentality or just this awesome utility side. If you get served an offer because you're near 14th and 6th, that's just Starbucks. 
So much the better. So here's the second part of my formula. Utility plus ease of use equals rapid adoption. And as Rick pointed out, no one cares about the technology. When I talk to clients, I don't walk in the room going, look, better reality. Because they're going to think, that's a trend that died about a year ago. And I'll say, well, Walmart, Google, IBM, Best Buy, Qualcomm, they don't think it's fat. So we should pay attention. IBM, case study. This year, Wimbledon, they had a product, but no better reality app called Seer. 